Hello students and welcome to video two in chapter 5.6 production planning. So in video one we looked at uh, stock control charts. So we looked at the definition of inventory and then we went through stock control charts. In this video we're going to go back to the first two learning objectives. We're going to define the supply chain and then we're going to look at the differences between just in time and just in case production. So firstly, let's just define the local and global supply chain process. So it's likely you've heard of the term supply chain before. So and we're just going to go and define it and give a textbook definition, if you like. So a supply chain is a system of steps that convert raw materials into the good or service and then into the hands of customers. So this is very much um, about the production and delivery of the good or service. So what we've got is, you can see on the diagram here, but just move my head, we've got the raw materials and the supply chain will take these raw materials all the way um, until we get into the hands of the consumer with the final good or service. So things that might be involved are things like suppliers, producers, wholesalers, retailers, agents, etc. So for, let me just walk you through this supply chain quickly. We start off with the raw materials. This might be metal, glass, um, whatever's used. Um, and then the supplier who delivers the raw materials to you will get those and deliver them to the manufacturer. It might be you. Um, and then the manufacturer produces the product. They then use a distributor. So the distributor will then deliver those products to the retailer of a shop. And then the customer goes to the shop in order to buy the product. Now, not all products will use this supply chain. They may well use more or more, less of these. They might not use a distribution network. They might not use a retailer. But in general, those are the steps that they go through. So why is the supply chain important? Well, a supply chain can do many things. If it's a good supply chain, it can reduce costs. Let's say you're a manufacturer. If you've got a good supply chain, it means that you can get raw materials for as cheap as you possibly can. So therefore, it can reduce that. Um, we can reduce delivery time to customers, so for example, by having a good distributor, then we can actually get it to, into the hands of customers as quickly as possible. Improve quality, again, maybe we buy higher quality raw materials, or maybe we get our manufacturing process as good as possible so that the quality of our production is high. And then maybe we reduce waste as well. So if we have really good quality raw materials, maybe it means that we don't have to throw as many away. Same thing with the manufacturing. So if we have high manufacturing quality, then more of our products will be accepted and sold to customers. I guess you could also argue with distributing. When we're distributing through vehicles, then we may damage the product. But if we have good, good, good distributors, then there'll be less waste in that situation. And different businesses will likely focus on different parts of these in the supply chain. And obviously, we want all of these. But for example, you could say fast fashion companies. These are companies that want to get... Um, new designs into the into the shops as soon as possible. So it's all about speed. So they may well focus on reducing the delivery time from um, the design into the hands of the customers as quick as possible. Um, one question that I often get here is, what's the difference between the supply chain and distribution channel? Distribution channel comes under the place part of the four Ps. And they look really, really similar. You know, we've just done supply chain, but this is a one intermediary distribution channel where we go produce a retailer consumer. And effectively, they, they are very, very similar. And clearly, they have a lot of things which are similar. I guess what you could say is that the supply chain focuses on cost, trying to minimize costs, trying to get it to the customer as quick as possible. Whereas the distribution channel is all about trying to maximize sales, maximizing your brand image and things like that. So whereas they look similar, they're going to be focusing on different parts of that um, in order to achieve their objectives. All right, so let's move on to the difference between just in time and just in case. My head's getting in the way all sorts of ways today, right? Here we go. So just in case production. So this is about, if you look on the right here, we've got the stock control charts that we did last video. So I'm going to reference these when I define these two. So just in case production is when we have stock management, when we hold high levels of stock. Um, and what that means is when we have high levels of stock, it means that we can easily deal with unexpected events. So let's say, for example, that consumer demand suddenly increases. If we have high levels of stock, 
it means that we can use that stock to actually satisfy that consumer demand and we're less likely to run out of stock. That's why we call it just in case. You can say, well, we have this extra stock just in case something happens which we're not expecting. In contrast, just in time is stock control where we hold no or in reality limited inventory. So we, we don't hold much stock at all. And inputs arrive, so the raw materials in production arrive just as they're used in the production process so that we can get that work in progress moving along the production line. And then finished goods are delivered to customers as soon as they are produced. So when we finish producing the product, we don't store it, it goes straight to the consumer. Now, hopefully you can see that there's, you've got some questions there, but let's, let's look at the, the stock control chart first. And one of these is just, just in case, and one of these is just in time. Have a quick think about what they would be. So um, the green one would be just in case. And you can see that because they're holding higher levels of stock. You can see that each delivery, it goes up to seven, whereas with just in time, it goes up to four. Um, another thing you might see is with the just in time, which is the purple one, purple, pink. I'm going to call that. I'm going to call that pink actually. The, with the uh, pink one underneath, you can see that because they're holding less stock, they need more deliveries. So you can see that there's one, two, three, four, five deliveries with the just in time, and three deliveries with the just in case. So that's another characteristic of just in time is you need a lot more deliveries because you're not holding all that stock overall. So here's a silly example that I use. Uh, so in my in my fridge at home, I drink milk, um, and I drink milk with cereal. I have it with tea, etc. Um, and in my in my house, this is actually from my house. This is my fridge. I use a just in case system. So the milk down here is the milk that I use, and the milk up here is the stock that I that I um, that I keep um, for the future. And what happens when I finish this one? then I obviously throw it away, put it in recycling. And then this one moves down here. And then I go to the supermarket and I, I reorder my milk, if you like. And this is a just in case system because I'm holding relatively high levels of stock. One of these milk takes me about four days to drink or to use. And so um, this is relatively high. Now, interestingly, for if, it, if it's a large family who use, they might use one of these or two of these a day this might be more of a just-in-time system where they're actually not holding that much milk. But for me, it's a just-in-case system. So the benefits of this are, well, I never run out of milk. Well, I'm less likely to run out of milk. Um, but one of, the, one of the cons is that my milk is going to be older because by the time this moves down here, it's going to be like four or five days old. So that's one of the negatives. In contrast, I could use a just-in-time system. I went and bought this milk actually specifically for, for this. Is I'm not holding any stock and I'm holding low levels of milk. Now, one of the cons, obviously, is that I could run out of milk easily. But the benefit is, is that um, I'm holding, I need less space in my fridge, and I can use this for other things. Also, the milk is fresher, because it doesn't sit in the fridge for as long. So that can build into the pros and cons of just in case. So with just in case, the key advantage is we're less likely to run out of stock. We also have more potential to bulk buy because we're getting more delivered each time. It's possible that suppliers may give us those bulk buy discounts and therefore economies of scale. That depends on the contract. I mean, you could have that with just in time, but it would depend on the contract. You can also deal with a sudden increase in consumer demand. So demand suddenly goes up. You've got the stock, which you've there is just in case. And therefore, you're not going to lose customers. Whereas with just in time, if... If customer demand goes up really quickly, then you, it's going to be a lot more difficult to respond to it quickly, or even though that's a pro over here. But the idea is, is that you've got the stock there overall. The pros of just-in-time are lower costs from holding stock. So lower warehousing costs means you don't have to use as much of the warehouse. So just like my fridge, I didn't need to use as much as the fridge with the just-in-time. Um, you could also argue that I need a um, for if a, if a business uses um, just in time, they can have a smaller warehouse. So therefore, they pay less rent overall. Lower insurance costs means that when you insure your warehouse or the products in there, you've got less stock. So therefore, you can pay less insurance costs. And also, we could say that the factory space could be used for other profitable activities. So where we would be storing our stock, we can actually um, use that for other machinery or things like that. 
we can respond to the market quickly. Now that contradicts what I said earlier, but what this means is that if fashion changes in the market, if, if consumers stop wanting one product and they want a different product instead, then we don't have all this stock that we have to sell first before we actually then start selling the new thing. And that's where we talk about fast fashion, where fast fashion, they need to be able to change their product quickly to meet the, the, the new fashion in the market. So they're more likely to use a just-in-time system. Also, stock does not become outdated. Again, this is related to the fashion. So obsolescence costs. Obsolescence means when the product is no longer desirable, it's no longer useful. And so therefore, you're less likely to have stock, which no one wants to buy because you're holding lower levels. And this is especially the case for perishable food, um, perishable items such as food, where food goes off. So you don't want to be holding it for very long. So um, food is more likely to be here unless we can freeze it, which allows it to be non-perishable. Right, last slide. This video is a little bit longer than I was hoping for. So the conditions favorable to just in time, you obviously need a reliable supplier because they're delivering it just when you need it. You don't want them to be late and you don't want them to miss a delivery. And therefore, sometimes in order to achieve just in time, the business may locate near to the supplier. They may be geographically really close so the deliveries can be done really quickly. You need a flexible and reliable workforce, flexible because they may end up producing different things as they respond to the market. You want predictable consumer demand because if consumer demand changes rapidly, then it's a lot more difficult to um, maintain your low stock levels. And clearly you'll need good IT systems and software that can model your stock and consumer demand overall. All right, 11 minutes, not too bad. That's all, that all finished. I'll see you in the next video where we're going to finish all these off. See you next time.